Joining me today is New Hampshire State Senator Jerry Little from District 8. So Jerry, um, there was another bit of legislation that didn't make it out. Uh, uh, I don't know whether it was ITL, um, which is a fancy way to say killed, um, or whether it was in committee, but it, it's something that you and Neil Kirk co-sponsored. And it sort of caught my interest because it focused on state employees paying for um, more of their uh, health care costs when they retire. Mm -hmm. I think it was when they turned 61, 65 mm -hmm. that they had to start paying into it. T talk to me about the logic behind that bit of legislation. Sure. Actually, the, the bill is still, it's still alive. It's still there. There were multiple pieces of legislation. One of them has been tabled by the House, the one that came out of the Senate. But so, there, so it didn't get an ITL? It didn't get an ITL, um, and that's not unusual. It's, it's just it's all part of the, it's complicated. It's all part of the process. The issue is still alive, uh, and it has to do with the fact that the Department of Administrative Services came to the Fiscal Committee, which I also serve on, uh, early last summer, shortly after we, we ended the session and, and took our break, and said, we've got a bit of a problem. We know we spoke with you regarding the budget just a month and a half ago and told you everything was fine, but within the last week or two, our consultant, um, their actuaries that, that let them, state is self-funded on, mm -hmm. on health care, have mm -hmm. come to us and said, we kind of messed up. The trend in pharmacy expenses is skyrocketing and we're, we've redone the numbers and it looks like the state is not going to be collecting enough money to be able to pay for retiree health care and that's an important emphasis. And because just the state are, retiree, not individuals? Just state employees who are retired. There are two separate plans, one for active employees and that one is fine and that one is actually governed by the, um, the labor labor agreement Called signed between the, the state and the, and the labor unions that represent state employees. So there's nothing that can be done about that, but that, that book of business is, is fine. The underwriting is solid. The piece we're talking about is for retirees, people who no longer work for the state are retired and are collecting pensions. The numbers for that system are not going to add up. We're going to be short. Um, somewhere less than a million dollars, but still short nonetheless. And the problem is that the way the program is set up and the way the law reads is if there's no money in the checkbook, we can't pro provide any health care benefits to any state retirees to make things even a little bit more Wait, complicated. So if you're off by $10? Well, you, if it's, t I mean... I'm, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit. Yes. But basically, if you don't have a million... You don't have you don't have any. a million to spend. You don't have anything, and so even we we just can't pay people's medical bills. And what's the size of the expense? I mean, uh, it's off by a million. The, the the size of the total expense must be significant. Uh, something's that. telling me it's uh, mid teens. Okay. I believe is the is the size of the of the expense. Um, so we're the, off by so, so so to make it even a little bit more confusing, there's within the retirees because we have the. the existing state employees, the retirees, within the retiree segment, there's under 65 and over 65, because over 65 people qualify for Medicare and they're required to switch, o switch over to Medicare and we provide a supplemental coverage for them. So the question was, how do we get the state through the, the current budget cycle, the two-year budget cycle we're currently in, um, and we needed to do some follow-on appropriation, which wasn't going to happen, or somehow change the plan. Retirees are under the opinion, again, emphasis, that the state said to them, if you work here, we will give you health care for you and your spouse for the rest of your lives. That was the case until 1982. In 1982, the law was changed, and it says that the state will provide health care to the extent that appropriations are there to pay for the health care. Yet the communication continued that if you work for the state of New Hampshire, we're going, and it's, it didn't continue officially from the state of New Hampshire. It was urban Urban-led legend with, yeah, yeah, right. within, the, within the employee community that we don't have to worry at all. The state's going to continue to pay for us. In fact, that's not the case. And we have had people come in and testify and say, but I was told this. And we look at them and say, who told you? And either they can't or they won't tell us, but it's, it's just the, the general sense that's out there. And unfortunately, it's not correct. So, so, so will we did solved? last summer change the requirements so that um, 
people who are under 65 have a higher copay for their um, uh, uh, for their uh, health care than they yeah. had previously. We we increased that. DAS came back to us and said it still wasn't enough. We now see that we're about seven hundred thousand dollars short, so we need to generate some more money. The bill that um, that I supported uh, was going to require that that I support is going to require that people who are under the age of sixty-five who are retired that are currently receiving health care from the state of New Hampshire and who have a copay, um, they they have to contribute to their premium. Mm -hmm. um, uh, it, Which is for as well, and on top of the copay yeah. and the deductibles, they have to contribute to the right. It's generally standard in, in normal practice. We'll carry that copay forward after they turn 65. Right now, people above 65 do not have to contribute um, to the the premium cost of their insurance. So anybody that's 65 or over right now, no change whatsoever. But as moving forward, people who are under 65, when they become 65, would continue to make the same payments that they're making today. And w uh, we got about 10 seconds left. Will this be solved in this session? I don't know the answer to that. It is still alive. Uh, it will come right down, I believe, to the Committee of Conference time. It might be something that we're doing on, you know, June, June 2nd, the last day of the of the session. I, I honestly can't handicap that for you. I don't know what the outcome. One way or another, it has to be solved. Whether it's this legislature or the next, I can't tell you. Okay, well, we're out of time in this. But in the next segment, we're going to talk about the process for you becoming uh, the Banking Commissioner, which I know happens on June 2nd. So please stay with us.